everybody and a welcome to the game changers show each and every single wednesday 6 p.m uk time i'm super pumped and super energized as i always am show up as an a player as everyone should be so um listen uh it's been a, a bit of a whirlwind week and uh i <laughs> uh, hope you guys are doing great and uh for those of you that are new to the show we're, we show up on here on a weekly basis. We have fun. We have great conversations with entrepreneurs, business owners. Uh, but more importantly, we talk about some really interesting topics. But more impo but the other thing is that we also talk about is having fun, right? Because business is about having fun, right? And uh, if you're not having fun in your business, then you've really got to go back to the drawing board and think about why are you doing what you're doing? What is your purpose and what is your why? So that is my um, that is my two cents and whatever it is. A um, couple of announcements, really, kind of how we got started is number one is that this show, if you're listening to us live, whether it be through LinkedIn, YouTube, whatever it might be, uh, you probably listening to us uh, through live stream. So if you are listening to us live, then do me a favor, share the love, give us a share, comment, or a love uh in the uh in in the comment section below and uh and also if you're listening to us on our streaming sites um except the season the season which is above my head because otherwise we just won't know who you are we love interacting with real human beings uh rather than the users of the world so um um if you haven't already subscribed to our channel by the way go to youtube.com forward slash Lee forward slash Adam Strong and you'll be able to see the show. You can press the subscribe button and then activate the bell and set it as always. And that way you're not going to miss out on some of, our, some of our awesome shows that we had uh, that we've that we've had and, and also that we've got coming up. Um, anyway, so uh, so that is a bit of housekeeping rules. By the way, we like to keep this fun and interactive. So if you have any questions or if you uh, if you want to reach out to me or our guest for today, then feel free to do so because uh, I think uh, otherwise you just miss out on those big opportunities, right? And if you have a question, your answer will always be no if you don't answer the question, right? So this is a great opportunity, so it's all good. Anyway, moving on to uh, our speaker. So um, this particular lady actually was introduced through a mutual friend of mine about Oh, let's just think about probably pushing on around two and a half, three years ago. And she's an entrepreneur. She's also the co-founder and a business owner of a, of a company called Wild Spirit. And, I, and, and we crack about this story, uh, which would which which probably makes you guys laugh more than anything else. But it's called Wild Spirit. Um, she's also the franchise owner of a company called Intrabiz Sweden. Uh, and that's and the main Intrabiz is actually run by uh, a good friend of ours called Tracy Smolinski. And uh, sh and and uh, our guest speaker, who's Claire Rees, um, she's uh, a franchise owner of Intrabiz in Sweden. So a little bit different in terms of the market. So for you guys that are listening from around the world, um, Sweden is that kind of skinny country in the middle of the Scandinavian continent. Anyway, so that's all good. Listen. Um, so if you're if you're listening to us live, great. And uh, just again, like I said, we want to have fun. We want to have interactivity. We like to have questions. And if you're a bit shy, it's okay. We don't bite. We're only human. So it's all good. Listen. Uh, so bring a, a big round of applause, Miss Clarice. Woo! <laughs> what a brilliant intro! And what so much energy. Fantastic. I love it. I love it. How are you, Adam? And thank you I'm for having me on. No worries, it's all good. Well, listen, you 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 know you know me. I, I, when I when I uh, when I do these types of things, you know, it, it's all about high energy for me. Absolutely, and, and you're you're the man for the high energy, aren't you? Fabulous. Yeah. I, I was laughing at that. That is brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. I'm I'm enjoying. It. I'm I'm looking forward to some of this fun that we talk about. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely interesting. So, um, listen. Um, um, for those guys that are listening in right now, whether they might be listening to uh, a recording from our podcast or on the YouTube or whatever it might be, give us a bit of a background. I mean, I know that you're from Wales originally. You moved to Scandinavia. You moved to Sweden yeah. specifically uh, quite a yeah. number of years ago. But tell us a little bit about that. What was uh, what was what was going through your mind when you, you when you, when you gave up the uh, I suppose uh, countryside of uh, of uh, of Wales and, and the Red Dragon and stuff like that and 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 kind of shipped up and, and moved to a much colder climate. 
what's that? What was going through your mind there? I know it crazy, crazy. But j just to, to just to let everybody know, it wasn't sort of like it, I'm going to make this decision and make this decision now. You know, there was a lot of thought gone into it. And when I was in Wales, um, I uh, my my dream was I always want to emigrate. So whenever I went on holidays, I was always going to. I, I, if I went to Italy, France, Spain, wherever I went, I'm going to live there. So it was always in my mind. So when the opportunity came up, and that's it, isn't it? You have to put yourself out there. When the opportunity came up that I was going to move to Sweden, it was a no-brainer for me. And, and and everything happened for a reason because um, it came to a point where my son had actually moved out. He was he'd gone to college, and my project uh, had come to an end. The contract had come to an end, um, and uh, the man in my life showed up. And, um, you know, I fell in love and he was in Sweden. He's from Wales as well. He'd already moved to Sweden. And um, it, that was the opportunity. But that's about it, isn't it? It's creating those opportunities. Never say I wish I could say I am going to. And, and that's what happened. And we moved to Sweden. And uh, yeah, I gave up that project management community development life um, to to actually run a dog. Like you said, wild spirit, dog sledding. <laughs> <laughs> don't I'm even get us started guys don't even get us started with that right it's all good so yeah, funny yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so we we set up Wild Spirit Dog Sledding, um, and we started off with eight dogs. And I remember when we act when I actually moved here, and uh, uh, my now husband, because we got married, uh, his brother said, "One day I'm going to have sixteen dogs, and you know we're going to have." Uh, because Richard's brother was in the business with us at the very beginning and um, I looked at him and I thought are you nuts 16 dogs, That's eight dogs. <laughs> are you nuts you know and, and then I, we set up this dog sledding business I think at, at the, the the most dogs we've ever had is 92. <laughs> wow that's so when you, insane you know to think that you're actually moving a, a Welsh girl is moving from Wales to Sweden with eight huskies I thought that was mental and I, th I was really looking forward to that experience and, and the news and, and, and a new door opening uh, and now uh, yeah and then we end up with 90 so we got down we're down to 65 now so yeah as you said we're a Welsh couple from Wales uh, we emigrated to Sweden and lo and behold we set up a dog sledding business and, and I cool. think for me, uh, as well, it, it was all the stuff that we've done. It's not been uh, it's not been something that we've just thought, yeah, that let's do that. Yeah, let's do this. The dog sledding was, but not for my husband. But it was like we lived in a in a cabin for five years with no water, no electricity. Um, and it's something for me. It was like that opportunity was there, and yeah, I took it because I I, I wanted to do that. You know, my, mm. it, it's quite funny because my my favourite pro children's programme was always Heidi and I always wanted to live that life and it just felt right. <laughs> <laughs> so Heidi, that's like I remember that, Matthew, Jesus. You know, but not with Grandad, with my husband. <laughs> so funny. Yeah, yeah. And, and it taught us, Love it that. taught, you know, one thing as well about actually moving and emigrating, it taught me how to be humble because... Mm. I went from, you know, I got, I've got degrees, I've got qualifications, I've got project management. But at one point in Sweden, when we were actually setting up, I had to, the only job I could actually get was cleaning because I didn't have the oh, Swedish yeah. language. So I had to clean. Mm. I am not a cleaner. <laughs> 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 I'm absolutely a rubbish cleaner, you know, but to actually earn some sort of pocket money or put a roof over your head. At one point I had to clean, but it taught me as well. It taught me a huge lesson that did because at some points when you're in these, these, these businesses and we were cleaning some businesses as well, people would ignore us. And uh, I thought, how rude, you know, but, but for me that I, I always then from that point, it was like, I will never ever ignore anybody because I know how, how it feels. It just feels you just feel rubbish, you know, to be ignored. That cleaning job is just as important as that huge CEO job as well. So uh, it humbled me that day. That was an amazing sort of lesson learned and, and, and something that is in, in my head, you know, it humbles you when you actually move and set a business and you have to do lots of things. You have to do lots of things to actually get that business established um, up, up and running and, and work hard and push yourself you know, at some point, especially the business that we had. And I noticed on your, um, your uh, some of your advertising, you were saying about a tourist business. Well, it's dog sledding. Mm. It's going to last five to six months of the year. So you have to think of mm. other strategies to make an income. Yeah. And we'll talk about that, actually, because because um, I know that that's a really interesting topic, you know, to talk about that. But um, yeah. 
how did you how did you find i mean you, you talked about emigrating from wales to sweden which are two very different cultures i i mm -hmm. believe so anyway Absolutely. um how did you um i mean I mean, I know that there's a lot of um, I take my hats off to people that effectively are, should we say, foreigners that go into a different country and then set up a business. How did you find what was the first couple of years like for you running your running a business in a foreign country that you couldn't even speak the same language and had very little experience in terms of culture? What was that like? Tough. So. Mm. Just think about it. We, I knew two words when I came here. I knew, I knew hello and goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all I knew. And, and you, you, exa you are exactly right. You know, we, I, 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 I am Welsh, and what you see is what you get. You have my full life history. You have everything about me in the first five minutes that you actually learn. You, you learn me. I'm your best friend when you just meet. Me. I'm your best friend when when you just meet me. That's the Welsh culture. We, we just, yep. we wear our hearts on our sleeves. And then you have um, a typical Swedish culture, which are, which can be quite introverted. It takes a long time to build that relationship. Um, mm. And they're very rule orientated. Well, you know, in Wales, rules are made to be broken. It is our philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> in, Swede in Sweden, rules are rules. So it was so tough to actually learn um, about the culture and culture shock you know if anybody has experienced culture shock it just it is a shock a shock to the system mm. and it's a new learning you have to learn because at one point as well I I I I, I dipped I was low I, I I got anxiety I got depression because I was being somebody that I wasn't I was trying to fit in with the Swedish culture and that's not yep. me but I've mm. learned to get out of that as well. And um, now it's, even though I, I fit, I, I'm more empathetic to the Swedish culture. and still me, mm. um, but I'm more empathetic and understanding of the Swedish culture as well. So that's what it is. When you mm. move into a country, you have to be empathetic of what they are doing to actually fit in. I don't think we'll ever, ever fit in. 100%. We never do it here, but we put it fitting in you know as an outsider and that's mm. what we're building our reputation and we've got quite a good reputation here as well we've been on um like we've been on the kevin uh, mcleod show uh, escape to the wild and yep. we've done a sort of newspaper pr and, and, and things like that and we're one of the biggest dog sledding companies in our area called the emp land so a lot of people know who we are um so uh so so and and we are respected and we get uh we, we get a lot of referrals as well from mm. other businesses because they know who we are and 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 our customer service our service that we offer tourists which you know mm. which is massive when you get referrals in the swedish world that's massive nice love it very cool very interesting conversation um, love to know uh, if any of you guys that are listening in, if you if you uh, if you're similar to Claire in terms of uh, where where she was at, and uh, if you're in the same position, and if you've struggled to make a transition, or maybe you're not, maybe you're just uh, listening in because we're having some interesting conversations, which is fine too, by the way. That's all good. Um, interestingly enough, because we're talking about um, seasonal businesses now, because you are in a seasonal business, mm -hmm. I think. Um, You've been in, I suppose, in the middle of Sweden, and you said yeah. around five to six months a year. I, I think probably this year it's probably been a bit longer. But um, what have you found to be the advantages and disadvantages of having a seasonal business? Have you found any sort of advantages and disadvantages? Yeah, well, the advantages it are, and uh, Richard and I are both the same, is that you won't get bored. You won't get bored of that, of that business. <laughs> True. <laughs> I'm, I'm that type of person, you know, that I have never had a permanent job. I've always ever had projects uh, because I can mm. get easily bored with, 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 with uh, if I'm doing the same thing all the time. That's why I don't think I'll ever have a proper job because I need to have new projects all the time. You won't get bored. Um, and there, there is, you know, you, you, you've always got that excitement as well. They're the advantages. You get to, 
Uh, and you can submerse yourself. You can really, you know, right, from December to the end of the season, from when we have our last phone call, you can actually push yourself 100% to make things work in that business. And we actually meet so many amazing people from all over the world. This year, mm. exceptional because we, we've met Swedish people. But normally, we get to meet people from Japan, from Australia, Lebanon, um, Germany, and Mm. amazing amazing people and the power of social media that's why i love social media for this one reason is that we keep in touch so i keep in touch with a lot of our our guests and they return so it's all that customer service ret retention keeping in touch i had a lovely message from one of my um guests that um this afternoon you know um she wanted to tell me something it's a bit personal so i'm not going to say it but for, for somebody, one of our guests wanted to reach out to tell me something. For me, that is absolutely fantastic. So I've got amazing. brilliant relationships. Yeah, it's amazing. And then, and then they bring their friends, and their friends bring their friends. You build in these solid relationships. So, yeah, they are the advantages. The disadvantages are then it, it's more financial because when that season is finished, then you've got you've got to plan ahead because you have mm. to have. A, COVID has actually brought this out anyway um, in businesses. You have to have more than one income stream. Um, of course. So we have to be start looking for work or, or other projects for the summertime back in February, March time. So we have to plan them ready for the summertime. And it doesn't yeah. always happen. And especially in the area that we live, you know, May and June are down times for a lot of businesses. So yeah. when we get, we, we're not quite there yet, but when we get there, we will actually be, the, 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 the dog sledding is sustainable. That's working. That's amazing. That's fabulous. The summer mm. season, we, we, we just need to get that going because we've been concentrating on the winter season. Um, mm -hmm. But that, that, that is the down, that's the downside of it is that you're always looking at the, at for the next step and if you think about it we work sort of like 12 15 16 hours during the winter time by the time that's finished you you need a few weeks off to re, to, to of course you do to, to, recharge, to the batteries. The mm. and recharge the batteries you know so uh mm, they, they, mm. They, they are some of the things but that then that's why the reason that i took on the interview sweden franchise was yeah. so that we knew we needed an extra income stream um and when Tracy came along and suggested to us, it, and I said, you know, I'm project management, you know, a great people person. I love people. I love helping people. Um, mm. So it was a no-brainer. It, it was just a no-brainer. I, I, you know, and I could see how both businesses eventually can marry together because we'll, we, we'll have sort of like networking activities with a dog sled in and, and, you know, and uh, it will actually sort of like marry together eventually. Nice. Very cool. Very good. Um, yeah. was, it's interesting. I just had an epiphany, and I don't think we've ever spoken about this, but are you familiar with the Red Bull races? Are you familiar yeah. with Red Bull races? Okay, cool. Yeah, with and you know that uh, they do? Yeah, yeah. yeah. In, so 30 minutes from us is the biggest ski resort in, in Europe, I think, in Aura. And they've oh. had the Red Bull races. So there's a pub there called The Broken. And um, they, they've got um, like uh, a TV recordings, you know, like the, um, advertising where they had the red, right. they had the red bull challenge going from the top to the bottom as quick as you can. It's nuts. <laughs> That's nuts. You know, I, I had this epiphany because, like, obviously, you you know, the dogs, um, you know, for six months of the year, effectively six, seven months of the year or whatever it is, you know, they're they're all, they're all full well or whatever it is. But I was thinking of a, a summer idea and. You know, it just came and came into my head. You might have already considered it already. Mm -hmm. But um, based on the concepts of Red Bull races, that you'd use a dog or two dogs to effectively yeah. do some sort of like summer rally, if you like, right? <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> so you create your own like, um, I suppose, box or meals on wheels with two dogs on front and then you race them. Um, and, yeah. and, and you know, I think it would just be like, just just be like kind of fun and you'd have competition. It'd be carnage. Like it'd be carnage. It would be carnage. And that's, that's the idea. That's the, that's the idea to have be carnage. <laughs> 
<laughs> and you, you have to have a look on, on YouTube for the mass takeoff with dog sledding. It's absolutely horrendous. <laughs> it's something I never want to be involved in. I hold my breath for the whole time, you know, because that's one thing you, you learn as well. You learn with the dogs, you know, is uh, you can't yeah. control nature and you can't control animals. And they say never True. work with animals. We work with it all. <laughs> True, true. <laughs> Otherwise, it'll end up being, uh, I suppose it'll end up being Jackass 4, sorry, Jackass 5, the, the continuing stories. I don't know if you guys have ever watched Jackass, oh, but it's kind of funny. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's so hilarious. Anyway, um, believe it or not, I want to go back to what you were saying before, which was all about, um, you know, maintaining um, cash flow. Um, yeah. You know, how do you... I mean, you've now been kind of, I suppose you must be a master of trying to continuing to figure out. I mean, you mentioned one point there, which was to plan in February and March about yeah. the summer activities. But yeah. how do effectively, are, are there any other tips that you have for our listeners of people that run seasonal businesses, right? Whether it be an ice cream kiosk or something, uh, maybe they own something along the beach or whatever it is. Um, in terms of how to maintain a positive cash flow in the off season, um, any thoughts there? Well, yeah, and it, it's like you you need that extra income. Like we've got the the extra bit of passive income as well, and we had actually yeah. looked. We were doing it last year before the 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 um, the actual tour started. Uh, sorry, COVID. And the plan and the plan was to be affiliates as well. So it's it's thinking of all these different income streams that you but the business can actually use and um, becoming sponsored, you know, becoming sponsored by different um, companies as well. And then you can um, I, I give you a feedback then. I can yeah. <laughs> then, um, yeah, so we're looking at affiliations as well. So when people book onto our dog sled tours, then they can, if they want, look at clothing, because that's one of the big big bear for us as well, is that clothing. So when people turn up, they, they've got horrendous clothing on. So what we need them to do is wear the good clothing. So we can have some sort of affiliation there where they can they can um, buy, purchase good quality clothing for not so much money, because some of the clothing, like a pair of trousers for us, is like you're looking at £300. You know that you spend it. It's insane <laughs> prices that we have to spend on clothing. So, like for our gear, you're looking at one and a half, two grand just to kit one person out uh, for the winter season, wow. so they're warm. So, you know, the dogs is hard wearing clothing as well. So, I think I'm going off the subject now, but it's looking at different ways of being passive income. Uh, and like you, you know, you know, we, we're investing in sort of um, uh, cash FX as well. So, there's different different types of passive income there. Um, and you, you you need to actually look at another business that you can actually work around that tourist business because that's your main component. Um, mm. And it's just being smart and inventive as well because what we've done, mm. we've built like um, a playground so we have dogs so people can come and um, visit the dogs. So it's a, a kennel visits and things like that and they can take a grill and a coffee at our kennels during the summertime as well. Uh, we've got a play nice. cup dogs can run free and it's good that and, and a little bit of education as well because there are so many people out there that that, that come to mm. us and they ask us for information on dogs especially huskies um so it's the it's educating so it's it's thinking smart and being inventive um and look at what you got as well look at what you have already got and how can how can you use that to your advantage to make an income and one of the other things mm. that we've done is like sponsor a dog so you can actually, so that people can, um, and what we are finding is kids always want a dog, don't they? Every child. Yeah, there's not absolutely. Many children, there's not many children that don't want a dog and they nag and nag and nag their parents for a dog. Well, what we find is they the, the parents are sponsoring the dog. Um, and then, especially if they live in Sweden, they can come visit the kennel. They can take their dog for a walk. They have updates on their dog. Um, so they buy in them a dog, but they they can they can visit it once or twice a year as well. Perfect present for everybody. So it's just love it. Look, it, it, it's solving that that you know that those customers' uh, problems as well because the kids come and uh, they they cry. They don't want to leave the kennel because they want a dog. Mm. All of a sudden, you know, mm. so love it. It's looking at the different things that you can actually um, you can actually uh, um, 
earn an inc income on, you know, and, and always say yes to things. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> I think they know, you know, you've, you've got to learn, you've got to know your limits. And that's something that I've actually taught myself over the years as well. Because, you know, when I met you, you know, I didn't know my limits. I've done every single thing. But it's actually, you know, just just saying yes to things and uh, and then figuring out how it's going to work out later. Because one of my philosophies as well is that I always love to run my businesses, my projects and everything from the customer app. So the customers will voice their opinions and I like to serve. So I I'm, I'm like to serve what the customer needs from it because you build a good reputation from that and they always come back as well um and, th and then you can reach out to them and yeah. just think all the relationships that i've actually built with my customers is that um if anything's happening in the summer i could send them a newsletter and um and i'm thinking of them then and i'm serving them uh, with with another opportunity for them uh, to come mm. and visit the dogs because people fall in love with our dogs they actually fall Agreed. in love with and and when they come year after year, they come to see a certain dog. So, mm. um, so, it, so it's actually looking at those dogs as well, uh, sort of like looking at the business and and, uh, and and working with that, working what you've already got. Very nice. It's interesting, and I and I and I'm a big um, I'm a big endorsement uh, endorser of what you've said. Really, kind of um, taking your skills because I mean you're a very highly skilled person, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, using those skills and effectively um, monetizing those skills to the maximum yeah. effect, effectively, that's what you're saying, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Because you you're the expert of your own business. You, yeah. only you can only you only you can actually you, you are the expert and you are the best of what you are of your business so it's yeah mm. it's, it's using those skills and monetize, monetizing on them as well but also you're offering a fantastic service um and you're keeping your your customers happy and you're providing them with something that they need so you're solving a problem for them very good. Uh, by the way, we got Stefan Tonin. That's just uh, Tonin. That's just he. He, he's, he yeah. was on last week and actually uh, he said he did slot d d dog slagging in uh, February. In Sweden. February. It, was a, it was an amazing experience. <laughs> and he's loving the conversation. Thank you, Stefan. It is an amazing experience. It's it's absolutely fantastic. I don't know, Stefan, how long a tour you did, um, but you know our tours will go from two hours up to two days. And uh, mm -hmm. when you actually connect with the dogs, because the dogs can feel everything inside, the dogs can feel how you are feeling, you know? So when you connect mm -hmm. with those dogs, when you arrive at the kennel, they're not just dogs. When you leave, when you arrive at the do kennel, sorry, they're just dogs. When you leave, they personalities, they got a voice, they've got, you know, they are something different. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's, and when you're out with them up in the mountains and the silence and they're working so hard with you, you know, we can offer people a trip of a lifetime. I've seen grown yeah. men crying on top of the mountain because they've experienced. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love what, it. What, what more can you want? And and what we are seeing as well is um, more and more people are bringing um, their children to us with learning difficulties um, nice. and maybe maybe um, autism as well. And mm. they've never ever seen their child excited and they come and they Love see the, how the kids connect and then that child all of a sudden becomes excited and the kids and the parents have never seen it before wow that many mm. many you couldn't you couldn't spend money on that could you you know that that's just invaluable to, to actually witness that Let's see what Stefan says. It says four rounds, but certainly do it again for two days. Love, love time experiences. Yeah. And you know, yeah. uh, Clay, you're—I mean, Clay, you're—you're you're in the memories business. At the end of the day, you create memories. That's what you do. So, um, Absolutely. you know, yeah. and uh, that's what I love about it's it. It's fantastic. very cool. Yeah. yeah, create create memories, and, and you know, people will reach out and they'll keep in contact with me year after year after year, and um, they'll send photographs. The amount the the amount of photographs that I have got sent because maybe people mm. will be walking in the street right and and that's like like what we say in intrabiz isn't it you have to keep top of mind attracts top opportunities and people will be walking down the street and uh, they'll take a picture of a husky and they'll send it to me saw this thought of you thanks love it <laughs> it, 
<laughs> you know, actually, I had a, you know, I just had this epiphany that came into my head as we were talking, right? And I don't know if you've ever, if you've ever considered this. And we were talking about creating like additional streams of income, right, for your business, right? Well, I know that your talented husband is very, um, should we say, he's very um, useful with his hands. Let's put yeah. it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, he's very good with his hands. But have you ever considered setting up some sort of e-commerce store, um, which may be um, creating your own branded merchandise? I, I don't know if you explored that, but um, I know that we were on, um, I was on Clubhouse, um, was today, but it was the other day or whatever it was. And we were talking about seasonal businesses. And, well, there you go. There, perfect. There you go. <laughs> exactly. So you've got this. I know that you've got um, some amazing stuff, but I'm just also thinking about like, all year round merchandise right yeah that effectively people can go on to like maybe a shopify and just like you know because i mean your stuff is absolutely like world class you know you you use the best materials and it's you know and, and it's just great do you know what i mean so um uh, you know it's just it was just kind of a random thing there no 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 that's not random at all because that bag that i was showing you now that that i just showed you now that's work in progress because the leather you saw on there, Richard's Rich actually um, produced his own leather from um, e um, Ellie, moose skin. Um, yes, okay. So last, so last year, the hunters dropped off 15 moose skins, right? So they've just, just been, um, the moose have just been skinned and uh, we it. had all the skins. And he's prepared all that skin, right? So that, and, he, and it's taken him nearly a year to actually prepare it. And now it's leather. The colouring on it is from he's going to kill me now if i don't remember what it is willow so it's from willow <laughs> so the, the color on that is t is tanned willow so it's all natural there's nothing in there that's chemicals right so mm. he's made that and then we we got the the fur then is from like the sami so they are the the yeah. the local herders of reindeers so that fur is from sami and uh that bag then is hand stitched Okay, so it's 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 actually made from the very beginning. You couldn't actually put a price tag on that, the hours that it actually makes to, to, it takes to make it. It's insane. So, insane. It, it is absolutely insane. So those type of things, yes, we are. It's work in progress. And he's we've got um in autumn time, it we got the um Husmark, the autumn market in, in order. So that's what he's preparing now. He's making a lot of things ready for that horse mark nod. And then, um, mm. and it's like he makes baskets out of birch trees as well. And like <laughs> the bark of birch trees. So he's producing all that ready. So yes, we are doing that. And yes, when people come and they come dog sledding at the moment, I've got merchandise that they can sell. Um, and what one of the plans as well is to have branded merchandise up as well. It's just, I've never got round to it um yeah. i've never i've never got round to it but it is planned for you know it, because people like to take things away little memorabilia as a way they do of course they do of course they yeah, do that, and you know it's interesting in progress. it's great for um like corporate as well you know if you have a corporate group and stuff like that and um you know and, and it's, it's yeah it was just kind of a you know a whim there and uh, i'm glad that you're considering it because you know yeah e-commerce and um selling actual physical products you know yeah. it requires a very different mindset and it requires a slightly different strategy well, but and, that, glad... and that's the other thing is my week my weakness is sending things in post i'm rubbish i am so <laughs> rubbish at it so if i do something like this i'm gonna need somebody to actually do that bit for delegate me absolutely, I, yeah. delegate, absolutely. I, can, I know I can't. I've I've had letters on my desk for I don't know how how long that I haven't sent in the post yet. So parcels Love is it. just not my thing. <laughs> That's what's Very holding cool. me back. That weakness. I know my weaknesses. <laughs> yeah, definitely, hundred percent. Listen, guys, if you are listening in to us live and uh, you want to make a comment like Stefan has done, or you want to make a share or a like, then do me a favor. Uh, for uh, ju we just like to know who's there in terms of engagement. Um, it, it's kind of it's kind of cool because we just like to have play time and have fun. Uh, yeah. I've known Claire for quite some time. She's one of my clients as well, and she's just a she's just a great bundle of joy uh, <laughs> to be around. She loves helping people and stuff like that. So um, yeah. um, <laughs> that's what I really win. love about you, anyway. Yeah, thank you. I like to see people again. Win. I like to see people win. Absolutely.
Well, that's good because, yeah. and you know, and, and that, and that to me is that, that to me is like a winning formula, right? If you, yeah. if you want to help others win, right, you win yourself. And that, and, and, and that to me is that makes more sense. Right. And we talked about this in, uh, in the last game changer summit with Bob Berg, right. He talks about mm-hmm. go giver uh, sort of analogy and the go giver strategy. The more that you give, right. Yeah. Claire, the more that universe will, will reward you. Um, and some people, and some people, they say to me, they're like, Adam, they're like, so when is this going to come? When is this going to come? And it's like, well, okay. you know, no one, no, there is no specific time scale. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you know, when does, you know, pigs don't fly, you know, money doesn't grow on trees. Oh, I wish it would. It would be so much yeah, easier. But I, th- I also um, think as well, if you're going to ask that question, right, you're mm. given to receive. True. If you, if you ask that question, when is it going to come? You're just given to receive. If you're given to 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 help people win okay something mm. will happen in the future but don't expect and you don't know when you don't know how but something will happen we have had so you know in, in our in our business we've had so many amazing things happening to us in our journey um mm. that you know even even this afternoon right and it's such a little thing but for me it means a massive deal is that my neighbor now uh, you know my neighbor knocked my door she'd made homemade bread and i'd wow. actually must maybe made a comment you know that that I, I oh i love homemade bread and she knocked the door and um she made homemade bread now i never expected it and i was over the moon with it so wow. and, and i've helped, and i've helped her out it's not been in business it's in personal stuff i've helped feed the cat and things but sure. i never want anything i never want anything for it yeah. but that's yeah. it is that if you expect if you're going to ask when is it going to happen then you're expecting mm. something bad aren't you yeah, well, it, it, it's the same with anything, and I and I say and I share this right with many, many, including yourself. Is that if yeah. you expect right, you become disappointed because you put an expectation. Yet the mm-hmm. universe doesn't it doesn't work like that. Do you know what I mean? And and yeah. without kind of getting woo woo, and it isn't woo woo, but it it's kind of that that manifestation. It's kind of you know you're setting setting it up right. You're setting yeah. it up for it to effectively materialize at a time when you're at least expecting it and uh and that's kind of my analogy so um yeah, listen this has not, been it's fun not, it's not i know but it's not even woo woo isn't it it's it's that body language and uh, my other business partner and i we, we haven't spoken about this but i've got three businesses actually where i've got we've just set up a conflict communication queen um mass uh membership with my, another business partner called sarah neestrom and she's a body language expert um mm. and um you know, and, and some things that she's actually learned is by your body language, you can communicate. And it's a high percentage. I can't remember the percentage, but it's a high percentage of of your body language and your facial expressions that it will actually um, communicate with that person. So Correct. actually, if you're, you're giving, I'm going to give this person because I'm going to expect something back. Your body language and your facial expressions are going to say it all. Mm, that mm. person's going to know that unconsciously. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's about 80%. I can't remember the percentages, but it's I think it's, high. it's it's high in the 80s. It's in the 80s yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah. So, um, yeah. but listen, today's been mm-hmm. fun. I've really enjoyed mm-hmm. our conversations. I know that you've got a lot of strings to your bow, but I guess yeah. um, um, what's, for, for those people that, um, that have enjoyed some, uh, you know, enjoyed our conversations for today, what's the best way for people to get in contact with you if they wish to do so? They can actually just Google Clary Sweden and they'll find me. Um, but I'm on all social media. If you put Clary Sweden into Facebook, um, into LinkedIn, into Instagram, I'm in there. Or Intrabit Sweden, Wild Spirit Dog Sledding. So anything to do with dogs, you can put Clary's dogs in Sweden, you'll find me. Um, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not difficult to, I'm not difficult to find. But, you know, I just love to have conversations. So if anybody wants to reach out just to learn more about my story, because I know a lot of people are interested in emigrating and moving and they want to know more about my mm. story and have that conversation. Um, and just to connect as well and to talk about, um, you know, maybe setting up a business. I know a lot of people, I, I've spoken to a lot of people at the moment are struggling um, in business and I'm happy to help. <laughs> Love it, love it, love it. Very cool. Thanks very much, Claire. Really appreciate you being on uh, tonight's show, and uh, and thanks to you guys that have engaged with us and 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 shared the love. We love that. We love engagement. That's what we're yeah. here to uh, to facilitate. Um, 
just to let you know that um, last week was our 100th episode on the Get Changes Experience podcast. So if you haven't had the opportunity to listen, make sure that you listen to that because that was a special show that me and my team put together. And it was amazing. <laughs> um, it was basically showcasing some of the best bits of some of our past 100 episodes. And honestly, it will blow your socks away. So listen, I hope you enjoyed today's show with me and Claire Reese. Um, and uh, we're, hopefully we'll see you again uh, next week uh, on the Game Changer Show. Take care, everybody. Have a great week, and we'll see Thank you, you soon. Thank you for having me. Cheers now. Bye. Bye.